On this week's show, should property investors do the miracle morning? In the news, half of property investors would not touch buy to let at the minute. Why is that? And we're going to be answering all your property related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Mr. Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. We're going for a little bit of a different theme today. Yeah, and one, I love it. One of the one of the questions that we get asked a lot is uh, what books should you recommend? Should you read personal development books? Yeah. Da, da, da. So what we decided to do is we just try it, see what you guys think. But we're thinking of doing once a month, a book of the month. Um, encourage people to read a book every month. Read yeah. along with us what we're reading. Um, and you, know, you can give us your feedback. We'll tell you our take on, on, yeah. on it. So that's kind of what we're planning on doing. So it should be a pretty, pretty good show. It's good. Before we get stuck into it, how have you been? Good. I'm really good. I'm um, just getting moved in, getting settled in the apartment. So it's, it's getting there. Um, Turns out the property was fully furnished, but the furniture's a bit shit. Go on, why? It's just all wonky and wobbly, so I've had to ask them to remove it and I'll have to get a load of new furniture. Did it go um, wobbly after you sat in it? No, come on, dude. No, it's just like the table, the coffee table, like you, you, you lean in it and it's like wobbling all over the place. So, Whereas this? Um, you can't even. It's solid. You know? can't even move it. Maybe I'll take this one. I have kind of done the same thing. Yeah. Because it's furnished as well. No, but. There's, there's kind of two lounges. Okay. So what I decided to do, mm-hmm. well, the the lounge that the living room where my furniture didn't fill it, right? Because okay. the room is like thirty five foot by twenty foot. Okay. So it's just like massive. How the other half live? Eh? Yeah. And my my so I was like it was I was torn. I was like, do I try and match it? That the, the place I bought my sofa from doesn't sell like that sofa anymore yeah, so yeah. I can't match it up it was it, so I was sort of told so what I decided to do was move that into the other lounge and then just redo the yeah. entire lounge did you go out and find all the stuff or did you get um, like an interior designer to do it for you I just bought the stuff myself oh, well, cool. Sam was using an interior designer isn't he I was yeah he is yeah yeah no I didn't I just bought it. I, 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 maybe maybe I should have done but I quite enjoy it I quite oh, enjoy pick, picking it out and really? stuff yeah that's a problem, sir. Yeah, it does actually. Why? Color coordination. I didn't think it was your thing. Well, but. it's not your thing, is it? You color blind. Oh well, yeah, I'm color blind. <laughs> that is true, actually. <laughs> I have that nice red one. <laughs> it's green, actually, sir. <laughs> <Do you> know, <laughs> it's true, and it? it's so true. Mm. But anyway, yeah. So that's good, man. Like we're all moving in. This this move to London's been a lot more expensive than we thought. But it's well, what it is. It is what it is. It is. I'm, I'm loving it. It's though. a big investment. I love it as well. I'm man. loving I love it. it. I'm loving it. Right. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so anyone watching about? this, you should move to London. Come to London. The grass is greener on the other side. Anyway, um, in this case, well, there's not much grass. I don't see much grass to be honest. Yeah, but it's if the grass that is here is green. We're, been, we're, we're, our office is right by Regent's Park, and that's very yeah. Green. It's actually really nice, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. okay so, uh, book book of the month. Book of the yeah, month. you're so, reading one that I'm hearing lots of good things about. I am. I've heard lots of the, lots of people mention this book in the past. So that when you told me about it, on the, uh, Russell actually rung me up when I was on, on an Uber on the way into the office today, like all like super excited about this book, saying, "Also, you've got to do this." And yeah. then he named the title, and I'm like, "I've been hearing about this book for months." Well, this book has been on my because uh, on my sort of reading list for for a couple of years actually. Okay. But I always I'm always adding to it, and I've always pushed it down the pile. And part of the reason was. Was because I, I I didn't. It's called Miracle Mornings by a guy called Hal Elrod. Part of the reason I push it down the list is because I don't particularly love the mornings. Mm-hmm. So me, I I normally get up about half past six to my daughter coming in the room, um, and then it's sort of like uh, fobbing her off yeah. um, for about half an hour, and then I get up about seven. It's kind of like a slow process to get ready for work, go to work. It's kind of my day. It's, it's not an exciting morning. I don't do anything. Yeah. I just get ready. And then and then and then come to work and then yeah. and then I, what I what I am good at is I listen to audio books yeah. while I'm driving so or now we're in London and the commute yeah commuting commuting in so that's kind of what I do in the morning I sort of thought I don't really have time for for, for anything in the morning because I've 
I've got kids, so I've got to get ready for work, I've got to leave early, I do a lot of stuff during the day, I'm kind of okay. But at the same time, I'd always fancied having some sort of routine. Yeah. So I am a big believer in routines. Mm-hmm. Agree with you. And I've never managed to get into a, a lot of the stuff that I do, reading, um, exercise, very, it's more ad hoc rather, yeah. than, rather, than, rather, than, rather than routine-y. So I'd always sort of put it off. Anyway, started reading it, and the first thing that he, t- he talks about the guy, it's a great, great book, actually. Are you reading really. it or is it on Audible? Um, I'm re- listening to it. But it's just Audible. It's on right? Audible, okay. yeah. Um, so it's very interesting. He's been through a lot, a lot of stuff. He had a really bad accident. He got brain damage and, and all sorts of stuff. And the, the Miracle Morning is what he used to sort of turn his life around when he was going through depression and, and okay. problems and stuff like that. Um, and it is, it is brilliant. It's basically talking about personal development. Right. And he talks about the, the six... The six things that he encourages you to do every day mm-hmm. and set as a habit in personal development, and he calls them his savers, S-A-V-E-R-S. So the six things are silence. Yeah. It's golden. For S. Mm-hmm. Um, affirmations. Mm-hmm. Visualization. Mm-hmm. Um, exercise. Yeah. Reading. Yep. No, no, not reading. Uh, S-E-V-E-R. What's R? Because uh, last one's scribing, so say, um, hold on, just remember what they are. I do them. I've been doing them every day. Um, exercise. Silence. Silence. Affirmations. Affirmations. Visualization. Visualization. Exercise. Exercise. Oh yeah, it's reading. Sorry, reading, reading and scribing, which is writing. Okay. But he couldn't think of anything that began with a with, a, with an well, S. Scribing Scribing's is not bad. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. That's that's the same. Cool. There. And what he says is do ten minutes of each right. every day. So it takes you an hour. Okay. And if you do that every day, it will make a big difference to your life. So some of them I do anyway, so I read anyway. Yeah. Uh, I do quite a bit of silence meditation. I do mm-hmm. that, but not every day. I'll maybe do it four times a week, maybe. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And he, he recommends doing a 30-day challenge where, you do, where yeah. you do it for 30 days. And then if you like it, you can on doing it forever. Yeah, it becomes habit, doesn't it? If, yeah. you, if you do it... And it becomes uh, part of your day as opposed to, oh, I've got to do that. Mm. Um, so one of the things we've done with the, with the, the staff is um, we've made them do 10 minutes of... Um, sales training. Sales training. Yeah. Um, training every single day. And the, they've got to do that before they come to work. And yeah. they, I believe they're loving it. I believe they're loving it. There's only little exercises that they have to do every morning. To it's little disciplines that make a big difference, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So... I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. I'm loving. I mean, the first couple of days, uh, he talks about um, how, like, to make a habit. You, traditionally, to make a habit, they, they recommend like uh, sort of 21 days. I, I've found for me, I use like the, the um, acronym FATE for me. Anytime I'm starting a new habit, so yeah. F is yeah. fun. So the first couple of times you do it, it's fun. You're right. excited about it. Yeah. 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 Then um, it's awful. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's like almost agony. Yeah. Agony. Yeah. Awful agony. It's like unbearable. Almost. Yeah. It's terrible. And that lasts about ten days. And you know, this is just terrible. Um, then it's just terrible. Right. right. Okay. So it starts off fun. It turns into agony or then awful. It then it goes terrible. And then it eventually becomes enjoyable. Right. Okay. So they're the sort of the stages of it. So right now I'm on. Uh, I'm terrible at the time. I love it the rest of the time. When the alarm goes off, because I'm doing it from half five till half six, right. so I want to do it before my daughter gets up. Yeah. So I'm setting the alarm for about 25 past five. So when the alarm goes off, I am like, oh. And the other thing is, I'm not having a break. I'm doing it every day. It's yeah, Monday, to, Monday to Sunday. Okay. So even on a Sunday, I'm getting about half past five. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't sleep that much anyway. So like, I'm always awake that time anyway. So it's uh, Half five? Half five, six. I'm always awake. Um, so I don't sleep that much. Um, like I sleep probably four or five hours a night, if that. Yeah. Um, and well, that's one, one of the things they like look at is like it's, it's like excuses. So number one sort of excuse is, oh, you know, I need I need the sleep, and they do research in, into sleep and how much sleep you actually need. Do you know that, that does my head in when I hear people say that? When people tell me they need twelve to fourteen hours a day sleep, I'm like, sleep quicker. Who Arnold Schwarzenegger says that. So many people. Twelve when, hours a day. Seriously, so many people. Like when Have I you meet ever, them, ever heard anyone say they need twelve to fourteen hours a day? I've heard people Honestly, say eight. Honestly, mate, I will tell you what. Um, so many people that I hear that want to come on to do property at the crash course the academy events things like that um, uh, they say they haven't got the time to do at the academy for instance and I say well like what do you do for a living and we start talking about it and they are, they're allocating like 12 hours to sleeping 
I'm like, sleep quicker. Arnold Schwarzenegger says that. He says sleep faster. Sleep faster. You don't need How that many hours. How much does he sleep? Uh, he's five hours, five hours. He sleeps five hours, five hours a day. How about you? Me, five to, five to six hours max. See, I I'll, cannot remember last time I slept more than six hours. I feel and like I can't remember last time I slept more than three hours without waking up. Wow. See, I need more than that. No. I I'm feel like I need about seven. What, what I find happens is I'll sleep for, like, I'll go to bed at midnight, one o'clock, and I'll be up by six o'clock. I'll wake by six o'clock, yeah? Um, and then what'll happen every couple of weeks, I'll, like, crash during the day for, like, four or five hours. I'll just, I'll get, I'll get very tired and a little bit, yeah, I'll get a little bit tired and I need to have a sleep during the day or whatever. Or, 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 or have I you just sleep. slept slightly longer every day? Might that just stop that? Yeah, but I can't. I, I can't get my body to sleep more. Really? That's the thing. I wake up and I'm awake. And I, even if I try to go back to sleep, I can't. See, I used to be like that. Yeah. But, but I used to not, I still slept more than that. But if I woke up, I, if I woke up in the night, I was like, that was it. I'm yeah. like, oh, like it's 3 a.m. I'm, I'm screwed. Awake. I'm yeah. awake now. Yeah. Cause you've got so many thoughts and stuff yeah. going, through, going through your mind. Because you know, you you're always thinking. We're always, like, what, we, what we're doing with business, we're always thinking about then what's next. How can we make this better? How can we do that? So we're but always, I've got always myself thinking. out of that now. Have you? How did you do that? I had kids. Okay, well, that helps. He just got me out of it because it was like, well, I'm, I couldn't live. Like, yeah, it's yeah, gonna yeah. wake up, they're crying, you wake up. It's yeah. like, it's, it's, I just got uh, myself well, out of it. Maybe now that like, like we moved, every, all the big stuff that was happening in our lives and we're working that's happened. So maybe now things are going to start settling down. Um, I've got the apartment and things like that. So it's all good. Yeah. So. But it's, it's, it's um, but anyway, so I'm, so I'm like, I'm having about seven hours. So I'm going to bed about half 10. Mm hmm. Half 11, half 12, half 1, half 2, half 3, half 4, half 5, yeah. About half 10, going to bed, it's 7 hours, isn't it? Having about 7 hours yeah. sleep, um, which is enough. I'm yeah, cool. Yeah. And what, what I'm thinking is, what he said, a lot of it's your mindset. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up, if you, so for me, if I had to get about half past 5, yeah. normally, I'd be like, ugh, half 5, painful. And I'd be expecting to be like, oh, tired in the morning. But because I'm expecting to be tired, I am. Yeah, okay. Whereas now, when I go to bed, I don't look at the time. I look at how much sleep I'm going to have. So I get about half ten. I think, wow, I'm going to get seven hours of okay. nice sleep. And I'm thinking, I'm focusing on the seven hours, yeah, not yeah. on the half five. So yeah, I'll be seven hours is perfectly enough sleep for me. I'm going to be fine when I get up at half yeah, five. Yeah. Wake up, just get straight up, brush your teeth straight away, minty freshness, yeah. glass of water because you're a bit dehydrated. Yeah. And then bang straight into. I it. do find it helps. Like if if you set an alarm, as soon as that alarm goes off, get out of bed. Yeah. yeah. Don't like snooze it and snooze it and snooze it. Just your alarm goes off, get out of bed. Doing the meditation straight away. I do, um, and then go straight. I've changed the order a little bit. I prefer the order my way. So okay. I do the meditation first straight away. Then go into the visualization. These are such powerful stuff, man. Mm. Then go into the um, affirmations. Yeah. So I've switched those two around because I find I'm better at the visualization straight after a meditation because I'm okay. in this state. Yeah. Um, then reading. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and then uh, after that, do the scribing and I finish the exercise because yeah. I want to have a shower as soon as yeah, I finish. Yeah, and I'm doing like an insanity workout. Okay. So I'm 10 days in. So I haven't been doing it for very long. Good. No, I'm not. I'm 11. 11 days in. Good. So tomorrow will be the 12th. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. Good. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's given me such a good kickstart rather than being rushed in the morning. And, yeah, but I've got done. time yeah. to just relax. And and be and do do it, you know. Yeah, and do it for yourself, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, um, without having the kids there and everything before that. And yep. then it, what it means is, by the time I've finished, uh, because I'm just doing it so early, I've th I then spend some quality time with the kids mm -hmm. before I go to work. Okay. Which means I don't feel like I have to rush back afterwards to go and see them. Yeah. Because I've, I've spent half an hour to an hour with them. Yeah. In the morning, have breakfast together. Mm. I never I also used to get breakfast on the way to work. Yeah, you're always so stressed. It's, so yeah. it's giving me that nice bit of family to a couple of hours in the morning. Yeah. And then I can focus on work and I'm at work. And I've done that, I've got it out of the way. Um, and I'm still reading on the way to work and, and cool. back and stuff. But for Sounds me. Like a good book. Mate, I think we should all read it for next month. I would encourage you guys to read it and give the 30 day challenge a go. Yeah. It is hard, but the thing is, is when, when something's hard, I love it when something's hard because I know that most people won't do it. Yeah. yeah. And it gives me an edge. Yeah, it gives you the edge. So if it was I, easy, everyone would do it, wouldn't they? Yeah. It is hard, but it's enjoyable. Mm. I'm already enjoying it. It's already fun yeah. for me. Good. So I would Happy highly, days. highly, highly 
recommend it. There's some t- for me. There's some tweaks I would do. I would do some things a little bit differently, and maybe at some point we'll you know we'll 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 come up with our own sort of I think version. So. I think we need to, yeah, yeah. Of it, yeah. I think we need to come up with our so, own version. Because I like to do one before I go to bed as well. So yeah, for me, okay. yeah. So I don't know, but I, but this is brilliant. I highly oh. recommend it. Miracle um, Morning. Who's it by? Hell Elrod. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I highly recommend doing it and taking up the 30 day challenge. He's given it a lot. He's made it, he's just made it simple. Sweet. And you know, I, I think that's good. Awesome. So, good book. Very good. Highly recommend. Give it a read. It's now time for this. So in the news this week, we are discussing how half of current property investors would not touch buy to lets. They would want to leave the market if they could. Um, and I think that's that's like quite important um, and why that is. So it's an ind- it's a um, it's a news article on the Property Industry Eye website. And basically it says half of current landlords would not go near the buy to let market market if they could now if they choose to know. So half of current landlords would not enter the buy to let market for the first time now. Rather than invest, they would stay out of the market, citing government interventions, regulation changes, economic uncertainty, and lack of returns. So out of the 738 landlords asked for their opinion, over 40% said they would, st- only 40% said they would still invest in the buy to let markets. Um, the other 60% said they wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Okay. Um, one in four said they intended to increase the rents over the course of the next 12 months to cover the to um, to cover the, the incre- increases in costs like tax things like that. Um, while the majority of landlords believe they are renting out at least one of their properties below the actual rental value that it could achieve. Um, so it's interesting. It's interesting. What's your take on on uh, getting into buy to lets at the minute? Um, it's, it's it's talked about a lot at the minute and a lot of yep. um, various places online. It is. Uh, it depends how you rent it out, doesn't it? If you're going to mm. rent it out, I mean, we talked last week about you know through a company or yep. and a, a lot of these landlords will probably own them in, in their own name. I was just going to say they're probably uh, old so they've had all these tax changes come in. They're probably just renting them out for the for the general rent. Yeah, and they're probably not maximising rents yeah. through HMOs, through service accommodation, through what, whatever it is. Do you think it's a case of a lot of these um, landlords are sort of stuck in their old ways? They're, they're old school landlords. They bought conventionally. They probably on repayment mortgages. Mm. They probably borrowed through a high street lender, not a proper mortgage or a, a more competitive mortgage lender. Um, and now they're in a situation where they're probably losing money. They're not getting creative to maximise the rents. So they're not getting super rents. They're only getting general rents. Um, well, here's the thing. And right? they don't, they don't want to move with the times. We're just on the academy, don't we? We run a program on the academy called the Business of Property Investing, yeah. right? And and the, basically, the, the idea of that is to take you from an amateur mindset yep. and take you to a professional mindset. And the thing is, is that 95% of landlords are amateurs. Yes, they're just And they're true. just they're just like they're accidental. Like accidental landlord, yeah. or they've they've just gone. Oh, I've got a bit of money left over. Let's buy that house. Yeah, and they buy a house based on their feelings, and yeah. and they're not pros. So for an amateur landlord, yeah, the rules have changed. Yeah. But for me, this is good news. Yeah, I think. Because if yeah. half of the landlords are trying to get out, it's yeah. opportunity for the professionals to come in and make all make all the money. And, and but yeah, I think it's brilliant. I said this last week. I know one landlord has twenty three properties. He's, he's selling them all. Yeah, great. Well, um, great. Could great. Be a good lease option, for example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, you want to save money on tax? Do you want to sp- space that out? Space out. Yeah. yeah, yeah over some different ideas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, that's what I'm talking. Oh, so. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. No, nothing little, happens. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see, nothing to see here. So, Nick, so Nick yeah, I, I understand what they're saying. I don't think they're bad. I don't think no. it's terrible. They're just amateurs. Yeah. So I understand. I, I get why that is. But if for this, anyone watching this that know that watches our show regularly and knows about the strategies, knows how to do it tax wisely, knows mm-hmm. how to buy it correctly, knows how to rent it out to make super rents, knows how to buy it low and rent it high. If anyone that knows all that, then what you want, then what it you is good. About, yeah, it is good. <laughs> it, now, yes. It might drop with Brexit. The, the 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 value might drop, but like we always say, it's an island. It's going to go back up again. Yeah, yeah. It, it dropped in the recession in two thousand eight. It's gone back up, gone again. Back up again, and that was a massive recession. And the thing is, is that you know a lot a lot of the smart investors, the professionals, they yeah. make money during the ups. They make money during the downs. Yeah. So for me, I'm not worried at all. It's interesting um, that you, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I think you can. I think old dogs can learn new tricks. Well, you um, learned one, didn't you? I learned, I learned some, yeah. So, um, But it's, 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 a, it's a good case in point for getting educated. Yeah. Education is key. 
How, of course. How, how, what, why, why, we re- why do I read do you know all I mean? the time? Why, why? Do, why do I go on programs? What? The, I'm going to a pro- I was in a program last week. I'm going to a program in two weeks' time because mm. I'm, I'm, I'm continually trying to educate, to learn more about stuff I don't know. So perhaps a lot of these landlords are stuck in their old ways of just renting to the family down the road for a basic 450, 500 pound a month, a basic general rent. Whereas if they got a little bit educated and started learning how to do super rents, um, then that's better for them, surely. Mm. And they would be th- have a thriving business. Um, but the, the problem you find is a lot of these older landlords are so stuck in their ways that they do not want to change. And they think that everything that comes along now, um, like the, the service accommodation model and things like that, they, they all just think it's dodgy and it's illegal. Risky. and they, Risky. But what's more risky, running your property at a loss or running your property at a, prof- a profit. Maybe these landlords need to start treating it like a business instead yeah. of treating it like a hobby or a side hustle. Exactly. Um, and I get so infuriated with some of these so-called experts online that are old school landlords and they make out they're so bloody good at it, but they're, they're not. They're old school, they need to get educated, they need to open their eyes a little bit and, and realize that things move with the times. Mm-hmm. Like move with the times. If you want to keep up, you've got to keep up with the times. Um, what was good 10 years ago is not good today. Do you know what I mean? So move with the time. I mean, now Maximize more profits. than ever, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's moving. Be everything's, creative. Everything's moving and flowing so fast. You've got you to keep up with it. So, sorry, Nick. <laughs> so there you go. That's, that's, that's our what big we think tip. of that. Move with the times. It's now time for this. Okay, so it's now time for the question and answer session. Um, so we've taken the questions from you, last week's YouTube videos and also the Property Investors with Samuel Leeds Facebook Live that we've done earlier on today. Um, so we have a question here from Miss Fleet 87 on the YouTube channel. Uh, and it says, I'm a single mum. Is it a mom. good question? It is a good question. Go on. I'm a single mum working full to this time. One. I'm a single mum. And Lee's podcasts have helped me gay, uh, oh, thank help, you. Help me give me the confidence. Oh, we appreciate it. To go part time and focus more on property. Focus more. That's what I we will like. Be at the, it's not actually a question. I will be at the Crash Course in Birmingham in September. Nice. Very excited. Good stuff. I shall see you there, Faith Lee. Uh, we have another question. Go on, um, this question. From Tendi. Tendai. Tendai. Love the show. But thank you, Tendai. Thank you, Tendai. Sometimes Alistair. Sometimes what? Russell. Sometimes Russell keeps even. cutting off Alistair when he's trying to drop some golden nuggets. That doesn't happen. I know. It doesn't happen. Trying to say I keep cutting you off. Apparently that's what they're trying to say. Uh, he said to me just before the question started, he's like, I'm going to start talking, just keep cutting me off, keep talking over to me. That was why, wasn't it? It was to make that point, right, should we? It? Should we get over it now? Go on, get right, over okay. it. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a, a question from Soyo De Alam. Uh, hi, guys. Would from you who? Soyo De Alam. Soyo... Soyo De. Soyo De. Soyo De. Soyo De. I hope I've pronounced that right, man. If not, um, I don't know. If not, let, let me know. <laughs> um, Okay, hi guys. Would you advise buying a property to let out just before a recession or afterwards? Always looking forward to future videos. I would wait. If you think there's a recession coming and price, what generally happens after a recession? Expansion. Yeah, but house prices initially. Initially, they're going to go pop. If there's, if there's a recession coming, if everyone says there's a recession coming, which maybe there is, maybe there isn't, right? But if there is one coming, mm. initially prices are going to drop, aren't they? Mm. So that's when I would be buying. Well, when, when the recession happens? Yeah, when the prices are at the bottom and go up. And then there's going to be expansion. Um, I, I, if, you, if you're that confident there's a recession around the corner, I would wait till the recession hits, prices drop, buy, and then wait for the expansion. I would just buy now. Yeah. Just buy now. And then when the recession happens, keep buying. And then after the recession, keep buying. Just always buy. Just buy. Just buy, 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 buy. Cool. Okay. Uh, another question from If If Us. If Us. He's great with the names. <laughs> well, it's like a names. YouTube name, so it won't be his real name. Uh, what mortgage repayment options do is. you guys recommend? Capital and interest or interest only? Interest only. Uh, to build cash flow. So he's looking for cash flow. Um, definitely interest only. Interest only, 100%. Um, ah, here's a good one. Flow. Here's a good one. Brian Johnson, um, so why don't you buy your own home, Alistair? You rent in London, a property investor renting, am I missing something? Ah, good question. So, the, the, in a nutshell, what he's trying to get at is, as property investors, why do we rent as opposed to own? Um, I'm pretty sure we've answered this before. We have, but maybe you can fly away with that one. All right, okay. While I look for the next questions. Let me, let me just go through the maths as to why. I'm going to use this to write on. Okay. And you, you can work along this with me. Yep. So we'll do the maths right here. Um, so. Don't need a calculator. How much? My, my house that I'm renting. Yep. 
is worth 1.6 million. Is it? Yeah. Cool. So, what if I bought that, how much deposit would I have to put down? We'll just do the maths right now and we'll work out what's better. £400,000. 400000 That's working on a 25% mortgage. So I have to put down £400,000. And how much would my monthly repayments be on, let's say, interest only? Hold on. So 1.2 million times mm. 0.03 divided by 12. £3,000 a month. Three thousand pound a month on interest only. On interest only. But realistically, that's working at three percent. Three percent, which is not going to be three percent, is it? Because I'm going to buy it for a company. Okay, so it's going to be four percent. Four thousand pound. Four thousand pound a month. Right. So it's four thousand pound a month, and it's four hundred thousand pound up front. And that's bear in mind that's interest only. So I'm not buying the house for that. It's just the interest, right? Now my rent on that house is coincidentally. £4,000 a month. Okay. Right, so it's the same. So I'm living in it for the same price as if I was buying it, but that's just interest. So people go, oh, the rent's a waste of money. Well, it's not a waste of money because it's the same as the in- just the interest. Yeah. But rather than putting the £400,000 into that house, I can put it into other properties that will give me a massive cash flow. Yeah. Because £400,000 will go quite a long it's way. long, isn't it? Right, which will more than cover. So my house isn't costing me anything mm-hmm. because the money I'm putting down, my properties are paying for my house. Yep. So in essence, I'm getting it for free. Yep. And, and then I've got all the capital appreciation from all these other properties. So buying my own house just doesn't make any sense whatsoever because if I bought my own house, I'd be buying a crappy house like this. That what's that? <laughs> 1.6 million crappy house. Yeah, it's a very nice house, but crappy for a from an investment point of yeah, view. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's like it's it's a crap investment. Yeah, it yeah. just is a it's just a terrible investment. Yeah. So let's do the figures on yours. How much is your apartment worth? Um, I don't know. I've not looked. I think it's about 450,000. Okay. Where it is, I don't know. I've not looked. Should we look it up? Yeah, go on. Let's look it go up. On, let's look it up. Let's do it. Right, we're gonna we're gonna prove to you now why now. In all fairness, this doesn't work anywhere near as as well. The cheaper the property, if if you buy like if you want to live in a house that's say worth a hundred thousand pound, it's it's a little bit different. But um, so I'm going to need to get you the postcode. Yeah, what's the postcode? Hold on. You look it up. Look it up. Look it up. I've got to find the contract. So while we're doing that, just wait a minute. Let me just find the contract. All right, we've just found Alastair's house. Zoopla estimate is seven hundred and fifty-seven grand. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you bought that, how much money would you just put down? 757, roughly 140, but let me get you the exact figure. 75700 times 0.25, uh, 189,000, so 190. Okay, 190,000, let's just rub that out. 190,000, you have to put down. Mm -hmm. And what would your monthly, and what would your mortgage outstanding be? Uh, 757. Minus 190. Take a 190, 567, 567 times 0.04. Is that the very bad that? Be approximately eighteen hundred and ninety pound a month. Which coincidentally This is funny, isn't it? That is so funny. Is that your rent? That bar twenty pounds. Twenty pounds off your rent. So it's the same, right? So you're in a situation where the interest only is the same as your rent. Right? So it means your hundred and ninety thousand pounds is just wasted. Yeah. Whereas instead you could invest that, be earning twenty percent interest on it, which would more than cover your rent. It just goes to show you that is a crap investment, isn't it? It's a terrible investment. And like, I know I've now got the, the, the landlord's details um, as opposed to the agent's. Um, and so, yeah, he, I know so, it's more. So, see how much mine well. is worth on Zoopla? Because I'm just, I just, I know it was sold for that about yeah. eight years ago. It's going to be, it's going to be probably more, isn't it? Yeah. yeah more. So, it's, so, it's even That's more. interesting that we, like, obviously, I, I, I get why we rent um, because of, I don't want to put 190 grand into a, a flat. But, but you, um, do, you just do the maths. It just doesn't make sense to yeah. to buy your own. It just it's just idiotic. Yeah. So there you go. That, that, so you are missing something. Yes. I think you. I think you should. Um, as a as a savvy investor, you should use that money better and invest it wisely. Now, if you really wanted to invest, if you really wanted to invest your money wisely, you just know. You, I mean, you, technically, you could buy a house that was like a HMO and live in one of the rooms or something. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. But if you want to live in a half decent house, yeah, rent it, and it gives you more flexibility as well. Yes. So like, I, like I didn't know we were going to move to London. I know. <laughs> so I moved house, and then six months later, I was just 
London. like, sorry, landlord, I'm moving to London and move to London. Yeah. And if I don't like it here in Beaconsfield, I might go, oh, I'm going to move to Richmond. Yeah. And I've got that flexibility. You know, my, Can't do that with mortgage, not my, easily. No, it's a right pain in the ass. Mm. Because you, because you, because you, I don't want to commit myself to somewhere when I might want to move around or try yeah. a different house. I've lived in lot. I've lived in old farmhouses. Lived in new builds. I've yeah. tried different stuff. It's just to me. It's just a no-brainer. We Sweet. should. We should have done a flipping episode about this. Why? Maybe we. Maybe we, we should will. do an episode about this. Maybe um, we will. The question has raised a new episode. So thank you. But on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> that is time to end so we will see you next Saturday at 7pm don't forget to check us out on YouTube Spotify Apple iTunes Deezer Stitcher there's more there's I'm, loads isn't there I don't know where we're at but we're all over the place we're uh, everywhere we get please around. comment with any questions we'll try and answer them on the show and we'll see you next Saturday at 7pm see you guys see you guys